So with this, I was just reading that with this stimulus package that um, came out, um, the uh, the Fed is buying back two hundred and fifty billion dollars worth of mortgage backed securities, and that's causing um, evidently causing margin calls for mortgage right. mortgage lenders, which is a huge problem. So mm -hmm. this may not be the space to ask that question if we need to talk about it somewhere else. But I'm just curious how that's going to affect uh, the ability for people to get mortgages, the ability for banks to continue lending if they go bankrupt. And it's gonna, to it's it going us. to, that's a good question, Jim. It's going to freeze up the credit markets. The bottom line is people will not be able to go get home loans um, for a period of time until they get this thing sorted out. All the banks are going to sit on their hands and do nothing for a while. It's the exact same thing. I mean, you'd think that we'd have got smarter in the last 20 years, but See, or the last 10 years, it's the exact same thing that happened in 2008, where they couldn't figure out how to get money into the economy. And so they ended up giving it to the banks. That's essentially what they do when they buy the what's called repo money. In other words, let's say Bank of America loans out their own money to, to a borrower who wants to buy a house, right? And they do this a million times. And so Bank of America may have, you know, $80 billion of their own cash tied up in these loans that's making them, you know, four or 5% or three or whatever they're charging. <clears throat> the Fed comes in and buys all that and says, we'll give you 80, mil 80 billion cash and you give us those mortgages. We'll buy mortgage backed securities, exact same thing that happened. Uh, in fact, if you guys ever want to see exactly how, in line by line, how this works, watch the movie too big to fail. Cause there's an explanation in there where they're sitting around the treasury secretary's office where they actually go through the mortgage-backed security thing and how this works. And they do it in plain English. It's really good. It's a good watch. Um, but that's exactly what's happening now. <clears throat> they're buying that money back and they're giving B of A $80 billion, let's say, back to increase their liquidity. But what happens is that triggers all of these margin calls. So in other words, this thing's all built on a house of cards anyway, right? Um, they're loaning money they don't really have, just like our government is printing money they don't really have. They're just printing it and calling it money, and it's not real. It's not backed by anything. It's not even backed by the mortgages. And so when they increase Bank of America's liquidity, it's the idea is to give it to, to, to loan that money out to small businesses and people who need you know, money, right? But it's never going to happen. They won't mm -hmm. do it because their standards have had the increase. And so Whereas you could have got a loan for 640 credit score, you may need to have a 750 credit score now. And so essentially what's going to happen, <clears throat> Bank of America is going to take that cash. And because they've had margin calls, they're going to have to come up with more cash beyond the 80 billion because they probably loaned, they probably taken that 80 billion of cash and loaned 160 billion of loans. So, you know, whoever's backing that money or guaranteeing that wants the full 160, they've got 80 and we're stuck. Mm -hmm. So B of A has 80 billion of cash, but they can't loan it. They're in default. All they can do is buy the same T bills that the government created. That this money out of thin air, they can buy back the government backed mortgages like T bills, treasury bills, and things like that. Put their money earning one <laughs> percent and on free money from the government, and you know get the government to do to draft some kind of legislation that says they can't go under. They literally are too big to fail. That's what that whole movie is about. It talks about why these banks are, and literally, <clears throat> there's like 11 banks in the U.S. that were literally deemed too big to fail, and the government will never let them go out of business. So when you hear, which, and you read the articles like you've read and that I've read, um, what's going to happen is the second tier lenders will all go broke. The government will let them go bye-bye, but we'll never let these top 11 banks go bye-bye. But you'll never get any money out of these top 11 banks. And the government's like, well, we just put $350 billion into the economy to give to small businesses. Yeah, you gave it to Bank of New York, Wells Fargo, you know, B of A, uh, Chase, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And we'll never see that. It'll never, you know, it's just going to enrich the banks. It's going to indebt our government. And none of us will ever see any of that money. I don't know if you guys have looked online to see how much stimulus check you're going to get. But basically, if you make, you know, 50000 40000 and over, you're not going to get hardly anything. Mm -hmm. You get to a certain level, and it's going to be zero. 
So it's, it's once again, it's a red herring. You know, it's the fake news thing. Oh, everybody's going to get $1,200 and 500 per kid. No, you're not. You put that, put those numbers in there. They're using gross numbers. If you're your own business, you can't deduct from it. So whatever your top line number is, is the bases upon which you're going to get a stimulus check. Uh, it's just, it's not going to happen. Uh, Trump's got the great ideas, but the bureaucracy is going to weigh it down so much that none of that money, very few of that money is going to flow out to people who really need it. It's going to go to some people you know, uh, workers who are unemployed and are working on hourly wages type thing. Um, it'll go to folks like that. And, you know, I suspect most of those guys will save it or buy toilet paper or something like that. It's not mm -hmm. gonna, you know, it won't get into the economy uh, per se. So it's gonna freeze everything up for a period of time. Um, you know, the rest of the, the world continues on. You know, we're all in a saving mode right now, right? Nobody's going out spending anything doing anything <clears throat> so money's lasting a lot longer since nobody's going to dinner or going to bowling alley every friday night or something like that mm -hmm. um you know people aren't donating to the churches like they used to you know they're not tithing um it, it's it's just gonna wind itself down now that's the bad news good news there's a ton of money to be made out there because of that tons, <clears throat> tons and tons if you know how to play it You want me to elaborate on that? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, <laughs> the good part. <laughs> um, For this program, I would imagine. <laughs> here's here's yeah. the thing. Death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues and having to move, those things happen to people 24-7, 365. It doesn't stop. People still die, right? Just because we're having a bad economy, we haven't suspended deaths in this country. We haven't suspended... Uh, medical issues in this country. We haven't suspended divorces. In fact, depending on who you read, the divorce rate is probably higher than it was. Well, it will um, be after this last two weeks. Yeah, I'm, I don't know about you guys. You guys are always together. You probably are exempt, but you know, a lot of these folks that <laughs> aren't used to living with their husband or wife, you know, it's like they actually have to spend, you know, seven hours a day together or four or something. That's just too much. You can't handle it. So um, <laughs> that's going to increase the divorce rate. Um, and all of those people who have those death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, and having to move, um, all will become motivated sellers. And there are less motivated buyers. For example, anybody who's paying cash for a house, you know, any of the, uh, the, what we call the bigger pockets crowd, the Burr folks, those guys are, they're done. They're out of business. They're, they will not come back into this industry. We'll end up talking to them on the phone in about seven years and they'll tell us a story about, you know, they had a hundred Burrs and they lost them all in the great crash of 2020. Um, Cause we're still talking to people today who are just coming back into the real estate industry from 2008, nine and 10. Um, but now they're gone. So all of your competitors who were buying for cash, with the exception of the real large professional rehabbers who have their own money <clears throat> or have their own private uh, lenders and are smart. And those are the guys, by the way, who made all the money in eight, nine, and 10. Mm -hmm. They stayed in that thing and they wrote it down, they wrote it back up and they always maintained their margin. And so, and they made a ton of money the whole time. Um, those guys will still be in there, but everybody else is floundering. In the meantime, this supply of houses for sale that are a result of the motivational factors in, in the seller's minds, the debt, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, and we move, those guys will, you know, it's going to get more and more every day. There's going to be more houses for sale. Well, you know, some of these guys don't read all the stuff that we read, right? And so they're still thinking, you still get these cocky, arrogant sellers who are thinking their houses are worth a gazillion dollars and they want cash and you know, they're, they're, you know what doesn't stink and all that stuff. It, they're, they're dead. They're, just put them on the list to call them in a month or two with a much lower offer because they're, they're not going to sell it. It's, it's going to be hard to sell it. Now, there are still buyers out there, um, you know, regular cash buyers, but the, I, I think you're going to see the entire credit market thing freeze up until there's emergency action by the Treasury Department, not the Fed. Don't worry about the Fed. The Fed can print whatever they want. 
watch what Munchkin says, or Munchkin, or however you pronounce that. Watch what he says and does. That's the guy who's really going to make or break the difference. And my impression is this guy's really sharp, really smart. Between him and Trump, they understand what's going on. They'll figure a way. They'll come up with a workaround. There'll be something. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure out what it is, but there will be something that will improve the market. In the meantime, we got the only game in town. The way we teach the business to do <laughs> with seller financing um, and then sell with <laughs> seller finance, that's the only game in town. There is no other deal out there right now. Nothing else is, is happening. Um, here in California, we don't, you know, we don't even have, now they just declared that real estate is an essential industry nationwide, but you know, until that declaration, which takes effect tomorrow, um, even the title companies, escrow companies are closed, you know, now they're going to open those back up because they're deemed essential, but I can tell you, they don't have a ton of work. There's not a lot. And what's in the pipeline is stuff that was in the pipeline to be closed and will end up getting closed because of commitments some lenders have made. But essentially that, that spigot will dry up and there won't be anybody around. And the only way people will be able to sell a house is by contacting folks like us who can buy things subject to, maybe give them a couple bucks to move. And, and you'll find buyers out there because there are, everybody still wants to have a house, but they can't go to the bank and get a loan. Mm -hmm. But they have saved up 10000 12000 whatever dollars to, to get into a new house. So you have an ideal opportunity to make hay while the sun shines. And it, it is. We're, we are the counter-cyclical deal. Blair and I talked about, you know, the recession. We, we've talked for over a year about uh, our game plan um, for recessionary practices. And what we've done is we actually have literally have staffed up um, since this thing happened and our, our, you know, our break the glass plan, our plan B is to buy more houses because that is the safe place. And when I say buy more houses, I'm talking buy subject to, you know, buying either a lease option like Ian was talking about or something like that. Get some type of owner, get some type of owner seller financing out of the deal. And that is the safe place because <clears throat> you don't have to go to the bank. You can sell it without your buyer having to go to the bank. So just figure as if banks were dead and there was no money out there. Um, and who's left? When you look at all that, all, everything falls down. You know, the cash buyers, the burr folks, the bigger pockets people, the mm -hmm. connected invest, all those guys are gone, right? Or they will be shortly. <clears throat> they, may be, they may be inhaling their own, smelling their own fumes right now and thinking they've got something going, but they really don't. Um, but we do. All of you guys are in line to make huge amounts of money in a very short period of time if you do it right. I like that, what you said about um, <clears throat> pretend that the banks are all gone. Like, don't even have that in your mind. And I think that that is an interesting way to think about the real estate industry, period, <clears throat> at all times, is let's not, even, let's not even assume that getting financing is even an option. Right. I love that, actually. I never thought about it that way, but that's empowering, in my opinion, to, to right. us. And who businesses. else do you know in your area who is who has a master's degree in buying and selling ninja-like? Uh, like Don. Do. Yeah, Don. <laughs> who, she's sitting next to you, right? And that's it. Yeah. There isn't anybody else out there. So, <clears throat> you know, there. I mean, we're getting flooded with people who want to learn this business right now. We thought it was going to be the opposite, right? We thought, okay, our, our education business would slow up. And so we would increase the housing business. We've actually increased both um, just because everybody wants to learn. You know, people are getting smarter today and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you know. Yeah, and you get these, some of these real estate gurus out there, they're talking, ooh, now the thing is not just seller finance, but virtual real estate. Really? You know, we, we did that before Corona. I mean, we did that as a business model and flushed that thing out just because it was the smart thing to do. Um, and now everybody thinks, oh, you know, oh, we should do that too. Well, sorry, we've been doing it for a long time. One more question before we let somebody else have the stage. Mm -hmm. You said that you've got more people coming in now to get educated on this. So as our industry becomes more popular and people start to learn more about it, there's going to be more competition. How do we, the ones that have already been here, how do we stay ahead of that curve? You can always stay ahead of it with your knowledge. 
you you stay ahead of it with the knowledge and you fine tune what you do and you you go out there and do more marketing and things like that than anybody else is doing. You okay. you know you you're you do the Warren Buffett model, right? Buffett's philosophy is when everybody else is heading for the exits, he's going in. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. When everybody else is going in, he's cashing his chips in. So that's what this business is. This is mm-hmm. the business. This is the counter cyclical business. You're sitting right in the hot spot. And if you guys aren't making a ton of money right now, then, you know, shame on all of us because we've either not taught you correctly or you're not listening mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and you're not implementing because there is no way. I mean, these things are littering the ground out there. They're all over the place. And, and they will be more because in the next week or two, I mean, you know, depending on who you believe, this thing's going to peak and, you know, the 14th, everybody's got these predictions, right? California, we're on the way down. Our deaths drop every day. So, you know, but we jumped on it early. The governor, in spite of the fact that I'm not a fan, did a good job, worked with Trump, shut the state down, nobody going anywhere, and that's worked. Um, you know, everybody else will eventually catch on and it will get better. And as soon as it starts getting better, even if we've got social distancing going on, people will start thinking back to their problems, right? Remember, people spend, uh, they're, they're more motivated by fear than they are by pleasure, always. Just, it's human nature. And, but something that is more fearful than fear is, you know, the potential of getting COVID-19 and dying instantly. So once their, their concern about catching and dying from this thing is over, it's passed, then they're going to think, oh, crap, I still need to get a divorce from this guy I'm sitting next to. <laughs> you know, or uh, we still can't afford this because we're not making any money. That's what you got most of those. That's what you're going to get a ton of that stuff, right? Um, and so, you know, within the next week or two, you'll see, and we're seeing it already, but you'll see more and more and more people out there wanting to sell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, we just need to ramp up our marketing. Um, so I do have a question. We have a deal that we're looking at in um, Florida. One, one other thing, Don, before you, before you ask, is it follows on that. The other thing that we have to be aware of is probably most buyers out there who have money, who would love to lease option a house from us, they're not aware that these things are available. And so I think we have to do more marketing to make the, the business, the market aware, to make, to make buyers aware that you can buy a house without going to Bank of America. We're the bank. Mm-hmm.